Tonight we are furious, frothing at the mouth even over the appointment of Mary Wamboy at the helm of the National Employment Authority. We did the same thing when former Vice President Moody Awori was appointed to oversee the sports fund. We were stunned when in response the President said he was tired of putting young people at the helm who then ended up stealing the funds. Now, breathe in and out, relax, good. Let's talk about the real issue here. You see, it matters not who you have at the helm of this authority. Are we really solving the problem of unemployment in this country? Will this National Employment Authority be the silver bullet we've all been waiting for? We need to first understand the structure of Kenya's economy before we answer that question. You see, 50 to 70 percent of our economy is informal, and only a tiny fraction of it is formal. The civil service and the teachers combined make up about 800,000 workers. The others are in the private sector at about 2 million. So the question is, just how has the government treated these workers so far? Every formal sector worker who has gone on strike will tell you of the harrowing experience of a government that just does not listen. They will tell you of CBAs signed, sealed and registered in a court of law that are not honoured years later. In fact, just this week, clinical officers have threatened to go on strike on the 1st of November due to what they termed as, quote, continuous and deliberate mishandling of their collective bargaining agreement, diploma internship pay, scheme of service and promotions, end quote. Lecturers, teachers and nurses have also been on strike not once, but several times. And each time they have been treated with contempt. A government that deeply cared about its workers and indeed employment would not have allowed the doctors in this country to go on strike for over 100 days. Lecturers, non-teaching university staff would not be going on strike as frequently as they do. CBAs would be honoured. Now as for the informal sector, how would a government agency even purport to direct the actions or this diverse part of the economy? Just listen to how ambiguous the wordings of the Act of Parliament really are. The authority shall, quote, advise the CS. It shall make efforts to find paid internship. None of this language is compelling enough to make sure that this actually gets done. On the other hand, this administration that came into office on the promise of solving unemployment among the youth swiftly changed tune. So rather than enabling an environment for job creation, the word entrepreneurship was thrown at them. Be your own boss, they said. There are not enough jobs, so you should employ yourself and others, they added. To boot, they threw money at the problem. Uweza fund, youth fund, women fund. Young people were told to get into groups and start a business with little or no training on how to run a business other than a vague entrepreneurship 101 common course unit in university, which had hundreds of students in one large lecture hall, if you went to a public university like me. The outcome? Poor uptake of the funds default of the loans of up to 800 million shillings. If the government has had a hard time creating jobs for everyone that needs one, how on earth does it expect one young person to create a job for himself? The government pushing for entrepreneurship is quite honestly a cop-out. Not to mention that all those pushing young people into entrepreneurship have built their own careers in formal, permanent and pensionable employment for decades. But if you're looking for solutions, you may want to look to Germany and Japan, who have highly developed training institutions, and these are technical in nature. They've invested heavily in manufacturing, which provides stable, well-paying jobs. Listen, every German company is compelled to have 5% of the workforce as interns. They have in integrated this into the education system. All tertiary education students spend two to three days in school and an equal number in internship every week. By the time they are finished, they have gained both academic qualifications and work experience. This is integrated in their labor, education and finance sectors as policy. Back home, I'm not sure another government agency or more money being thrown to the youth is the solution. And that is my take tonight.